So you saw the video and then you saw its length and you were like, whoa, that's a long video. Don't worry. Instead of making separate videos for separate topics, I decided to just make one big video with all the topics inside. Below you'll find a timestamp, so just click on whatever topic you fancy. So a little after note, I realized that for the first part of this video, I had the resolution quite low, so forgive me for that. It's still readable, uh, you can still see everything, but yeah, it's a little bit fuzzy. My apologies. Without further ado, well, let's get on with it. So first off, I want to talk about the Borderlands free music files, which I got through a pretty arduous process. Um, I first made the mixes uh, via game rip uh, samples. So I just played the game, I turned off the sound effects, I turned off the voices, and I just let the music play while playing the game. First, I just ran around shooting enemies, trying to get the combat music and the heavy combat music and the ambient music. And then later I figured that I could just get into a specific layer of music like a heavy combat music and just just press escape into the pause menu and the music would keep playing and just record hours of samples um so to speak i didn't record hours of samples but you could if you wanted to but now i have the music files to my disposal or at my disposal i should say and that makes it a lot easier but i have to give a little bit of an explanation on how they work because it's quite interesting and it'll give you a bit more context on the things that i can and cannot do so let's get into it first off how did i get the files in the first place i went and googled a lot just to get an idea on how to get into the game files themselves borderlands free runs on the unreal engine the unreal free i think um so i googled for that mostly and i got into some game developing stuff uh, of which i have no knowledge about and i just specifically focused on getting the audio files which got me to this github page which describes in full detail how to get those it's a process um if you know a bit about python if you know a bit about running scripts coding um, then it should be relatively easy for you if you don't know it you'll end up in my situation where you'll have to learn a few things before you can actually do it. I managed to do it in a day. I worked on it for perhaps eight hours, nine hours at most. Um, so it takes a bit of work, but relative to what you have to do, it's not that difficult. But the process is here. Uh, the link to this GitHub page is below in the description. So if you want to go at it, be my guest. So you followed all the steps on the GitHub page and you're finished with the whole process, which will leave you with this. Here you have the WMEM files and below you'll have the BNK files. Now I've already uh, converted the WEM files into OGG files. That's why you have the duplicates over here. Um, but those are the two main files that you get. The WEM files are the actual instrument layers and sound effects, and there are about 20,000 of them. There are a lot. Uh, and the BNK files, that's actually the thing you'll want to get the most. So concerning the WEM files, I converted them to OGG, and then I converted them to MP3, which I have them over here in MP3 unsorted. As you can see, there's a lot of them, and I have already took out a lot, considering I've made already a couple of mixes, and I'll talk about how I do that later or how I sort them because um, that's where the BNK files come in when the BNK files are converted you'll get this little map and you get txtp files which are sort of text files but also playable files but you'll need a special kind of player for them to play um, that's also explained in the GitHub page but let's take a look over here and what we have in front of us Without these files, making these new mixes would have been an impossible process because without these TXTP files, I would not know what instruments belong to what song. For example, I could just randomly click on this one. Amazing. And I would just have to guess to which track this belongs to. I have no idea. So thankfully I have these which have labeled them into the areas and sorted them into the DLC, of course, and in the different intensities in the music. 
So for example, here you have Atlas HQ, which is, well, exactly what it says, Atlas HQ. And then you have, well, music, Atlas HQ, section one, part zero. And you have part one, two, three, four, five, and then zero again. And then you have section two. Um, in most, case, in most cases, section one would be the ambient, section two would be the light combat music, and section three would be the heavy combat music. In this case, that is also how it works, except Atlas HQ. If you look on the soundtrack, the release soundtrack, you have Atlas HQ state of the art, and you have Atlas HQ attacked. Part zero of section one and section two, this is all Atlas HQ state of the art, and Section three is Atlas HQ attacked. So I could just click one of these parts. And the music starts playing. Because what's in here is actually the WEM files that this particular file plays when I click on it. Um, the GitHub page explains what all of this means because this uh, describes how the music should be played, like should it be played consecutively or should it be played separately into groups and then fade away and then loop again. Um, I don't know the details exactly, but that's also not important for me. I just want to know which WEM files are in here so that I, that I can sort them for myself to use. For example, I have used all of these files concerning the songs that I've already used and I've sorted them into new maps. The main game here, Atlas HQ attacked and Atlas HQ state of the art. So here I've also sorted them in these parts and part two has these instrument layers, which allow me to use them uh, easily or find them easily rather, and then use them in the mix. Um, just a small fact, they still are named .ogg, but they are MP3 files, but that's because I mass converted them through FF mod, I think it's called. And I couldn't change the name. I didn't know how to. So that's why they're still called .ogg, even though they're MP3 files. So what you're hearing in game is actually all these different parts that are playing uh, after one another. Like say you're walking around in the Atlas HQ uh, area. You're just doing nothing, just walking around. You'll hear the ambient tracks, which are one of these four. Like say, for example, you hear part one. And this has a duration of 1 minute and 28 seconds, but around a halfway point it'll loop and it'll play again. Probably around the halfway point, or depending on the song, it'll change up into a different part, like say part 3. And the game will just continue to do that, unless you go into combat, which it'll switch up into a combat track. Now, what's not in these files is the game choosing to leave out or put in certain instrument layers. So, for example, if we open this one, these are all the instrument layers that it plays, but sometimes it'll leave a couple out. Like, for example, you won't hear a bass line or you won't hear the drums and you'll just hear the melody. Um, I'm not sure how the game does that or where that's described because I don't think it's in these files. I'm not sure. I'm not a game developer and I have no knowledge about this so i'm not pretending to that i have it now there's an important difference in how some of these files are constructed like atlas hq is an area the archive for example is also an area which is the archive from the guns and tentacles dlc um, now over here you have elisma which is the psycho uh, foster cluck dlc um, for some reason all of the dlc have been named after flowers in this case the psycho psycho Foster Club DLC is named after Erlisma, and below here you'll have Dandelion, which is the uh, Handsome Jackpot DLC. But the main difference is that you have all these areas. City Vault is Promethea, for example, and you'll have another city, and you have the cartels. Um, but you also have these little files in between. Those are event files or boss fights. The event files are just small transitions in music or their music from you hear from the radios or their specific types of music that you hear in singular events in the game. For example, 
the carnivora boss when you enter the carnivora boss you get the choice to choose three different types of music as your entry like you're some kind of a fucking wrestler um those are in here as well but they're events so they're one-off songs and what that means is uh also with boss fights songs they're constructed the same way it means that they have no separate instrument layers so if i go down here and i open up um the Troy boss fight I can look into it and there's just these two because it's just the song that is looping over and over again so concerning boss fight music I can't deconstruct it the way I can with all these other areas because there's no separate instrument layers which is a shame because the music is very bopping at some points and I would have liked to incorporate them in the mixes but it's very difficult to it's difficult either way because the boss music almost always has a different tempo from the music that plays in the area that precedes the boss so it's very different either way that's probably done deliberately considering boss fight music should be something that is special and noticeable when you hear it fun fact even the credits music is in here so all of the pop songs that you hear in the game even girl on fire by alicia keys She's just a girl and she's on Amazing. Anyways, that's for the Borderlands music and how it's used in the game and how I have the files and what I can do with them and what I cannot do with them. Um, let's go on to my workflow, shall we? So to explain my workflow, I'm going to show you one of the mixes I've made and show you how I made it from start to finish. Uh, in this case, that's the Skywell 27 Mega Mix. First off, I'm going to show you how I started it, how I treat the middle and how I treat the end and what's the kind of creative idea I go into when making these mixes. So these mixes I usually start with an ambience um, that's in this case the Beneath the Pleasure Barge song and I take the instrument layers and I just begin with that to ease into the song and then transition into the light combat track and then build up towards the heavy combat track and then I interchange those depending on what I want and what I can do with the instrument layers and which fit together so um, how I do that is I create like separate acts so to speak so here you'll have the introduction and then it goes into act one you have a bit of a transition and then we're going to act two and then here's another specific transition and we go into the last act i don't always construct my songs this way it just is kind of a natural process i create a bit of a part where you'll hear where you'll hear mostly the same instruments but with a variety and then at some point i'll create a bit of an interlude or a bit of a bridge into a different part and thus you get a song that's constructed in various parts in this case there are about three parts uh, some songs may have four, some songs may have two, depending on how large the song is. So let's zoom in into one of these loops that I've made, because this is the Spotify version, and I transitioned into a loop that I've made myself. When I make these loops, I pay attention, place close attention to the rhythm of the song, and depending on the rhythm, I stitch a loop to the previous one to make sure that the rhythm flows correctly. So... When you're literally in music, you can probably easily find the rhythm by just listening to it. Uh, I listen to it, but I do not have the musical knowledge to use the proper language. So if I fumble on words, excuse me, I just don't know the music theory to properly explain this. But what I do is this. The Borderlands music has loops of a specific couple of seconds and... In this case, that'll be somewhat about, let's see here, this one is 19 seconds on the mark. Um, about eight seconds in, it'll repeat the loop, but with a slight variation. So we can listen to it, and I'm going to count the beats with you, and then you'll hear uh, the change, or the, the midpoint, and then the end. So... Here's what I do. I listen to the song and I count with the beat. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty
seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I always count to eight because it's easy and it's that exact length that this particular track has. I'm not sure if that counts for every track. I don't think it's a specific rhythm. Like, again, I don't know new music theory. There's probably a name for it. If you're musically literate, you'll probably laugh because I'm just fumbling over these words. Anyway, on the eighth second or the eighth beat, you can change it up. You can add instruments and you can take instruments away and that'll sound good. You could even do it on the fourth uh, or on the second because that's just the, the beats that the music has. And that's what I look for in trying to make these loops. Usually I just let the loop play in its hole and then stitch another loop at the end. But sometimes I will add an instrument layer halfway around, but that'll have to be in here. For example, over here, like I have these separate instrument layers on this one, but Usually I'll just create loops and I create loops in Audacity or Audacity if you want to pronounce it that way. I'm not sure what the correct pronunciation is. Anyways, I'll show you how I make these loops. So concerning the Skywall 27 area, you have pretty much three different tracks you could use. You have two Reese's Rescue, you have Malawan Pushes Hard, and you have Karagawa's Minions. Uh, this is how I've sorted them. I listen to the released soundtrack a lot, so it, it was easy to sort them by the track names that are on the released soundtrack. But in Teresa's Rescue, for example, you also have the audio samples of Beneath the Pleasure March, which is the ambient track. Um, this was the first one I sorted, and at that point I thought it was easier to label them, uh, like bass drums, uh, melodic synth, and so on. But in the end, I figured that took a lot of time. So um, with the next one, which was Katagawa's Minions, I just sorted them in the parts and the instrument layers that belong to those parts, which is also effective enough. Anyways, how do I construct these loops? First off, I categorize the instrument layers into a couple of specific categories. The first one is the melody. The second one are the drums, and that could be the snares, the hi-hats, or the kicks. Um, I look for rhythmic sounds uh, that can help me to discover the rhythm or to guide the melody with the rhythm. Um, I look for bass layers, so sound effects that are, have quite a bit of bass, very low tones, and that carry a bit of weight to them. And the sound effects that belong into the song and that you could use to enrich the song or create some variety here and there. Uh, stuff like that. So those are the categories I use and then I just fling a couple of in uh, into Audacity like the bass drum number three. I put let's say the fade out synth over here. I put uh, let's look for a hi-hat, hi-hat and clap and a good snare down with snare and clap and then just see how it sounds. Not bad, but it feels a bit empty. So we're just gonna fling this one in there and I want a rhythm, a bit of a bass line, which is one of these, I think. Yeah, perhaps this one. Now you see it just works because it's all the same tempo and the same rhythm, but you'll have to do a bit of um, mixing in terms of volume because you heard the melody was getting a bit drowned out. So I usually amp up the melody a little. Um, the pleasure part was a bit too loud for me and the rhythm was also a bit too loud. See now the melody is more pronounced. There you go. 
Um, and when I'm happy with it, I just export it into MP3, and that's when you get one of these. Uh, that's pretty much how I do it. And based on what kind of in what kind of part I'm working in, I try to look for a loop that is like very powerful with a lot of instruments. Uh, the intensity is high, it's energetic, but that solely depends on what part of the song I'm looking for. Um, and then I just create variety in the loop by taking away an instrument layer or adding an instrument layer. It could be one, could be two, could be all of them, but then you'll get, probably get a whole different loop. But usually I just do one or two, maybe three, and create variety that way. And that's how you get the next loop that you hear. So you have this one first and then this one. So I took away the melody here and you adjusted the bass line and the drums and the hi-hats. And let's hear what it transitions into. So still the same bass, still the same rhythm, still the same drums, put with a melody and I think some sound effects in the background. Oh, here I took away the bass line or the that bass synthy rhythm you hear. There it is here. So we hear kind of a bridge of some sort into the end of this part, so these five loops, because here I change it up. So concerning this loop, I basically use the same idea as the Two Reasons Rescue song of the release track does. Like the end of that song is also the same of the same part as this. So this is the end of the release track. And that's where the release track stops. So I use that same idea to like exit a certain part of the song and enter into a new part. And this is still a bit of continuation, but you'll notice that it changes up over here. See here, it's still the same beat, still the same drums, but it took away a lot of instrument layers and that makes it sound a lot different than the rest. That's kind of how I play around with it. Try to create loops that follow onto one another that sound good, that give the song a bit of a flow. And then after a while, so after about five or six loops, I try to change it up again to prevent the entire mix from getting boring. That's the basic idea. Now let's actually look at the stitching and making the actual mix element of all this, because you see a lot of different bars or parts, I should say, and these short ones are all the loops that I've created myself, but there's some different stuff in here as well, which you might wonder, what is that? 
concerning the beginning, Ambient 6 is just one instrument layer, like this one. And these are actually instruments. They're not instrument layers. They're samples that I've recorded from inside the game. And you can actually see the date and timestamp on which I recorded it. Um, but they sounded good, so I used them. There. Um, I've stitched the ambient parts like together like so, so that they fade into one another, which you can easily do with ambient tracks. Um, because so you have no discernible rhythm. Like if you have a hi-hat or some other rhythmic instrument and you uh, put them on top of, of, of another track, you have to make sure that you don't hear like a um, off beat, I think it's called. Like I could give you an example. For example, you have, uh, let's take two hi-hats or let's take the rhythm synth and a hi-hat. Now, if I place them on top of one another like this, they'll sound good. Let's solo them. But if I do this, it'll sound off. So when you have hi-hat one or this and you like put them on top of one another, the transition is noticeable. So that's tricky to do. But with ambient tracks, you don't have that discernible rhythm often. So you can just um, put them on top of one another, let them fade in into one another. And that's pretty easy to do. And that's how I usually treat my ambient tracks. Um, concerning the rest, like for example, uh, trying to flow one part into another part is usually very easily easy. Uh, especially when you've made your own loops, you can just look for the last beat, which is over here, and then just enter into the next, which makes uh, one loop flow very nicely into the other. And using the counting method that I showed you earlier helps to do that. Um, and the more you do it, the more you can just listen to the music and hear when the last beat drops and just stitch your next loop onto that. Uh, but sometimes that doesn't always just work or it's not enough. Like for example, I've incorporated the Spotify version or rather the release track of Two Reese's Rescue in here. Um, but the transition is quite sudden. Uh, so I added some instrument layers to make it less sudden and make it a bit more smooth. For example, if you listen to this red part over here, just solo or solo like that. You can hear that the drums, the hi-hats and the snare, well, there's no hi-hat, but the snare, it's a bit of a muffled sound compared to what we heard uh, in the other parts. If you listen to the release track, It's very sharp. So how did I fix that? Well, at first I didn't fix it. I just let it be as it was. And it kind of works. But in my opinion, it was a little bit too sudden. So what I did is I took the hi-hats that you hear in here and the drum and snare that you hear in here and I let them fade in towards the end so that the muffled bits become sharp. That's a bit, way better transition. Um, I was actually looking at this one, this Rhythm Synth 13, and why I put it in here. I believe it's because you hear that bass rhythm. 
the do 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 and you hear it it's in here as well but less pronounced so when you suddenly hear that disappear or drown into other sounds it's noticeable so i think i put that in here as well but the difference is not that significant so i may have just left it in here for i don't know lazy purposes because i was too lazy to pull it out in any case um same thing here like if i mute this one it sounds like this but if i don't mute it well you might hear the difference you might not i don't really notice the difference um but that's the case that's like a case of when you're editing sometimes you're so focused you're so uh, listening to one specific part so many times that you very easily notice the difference but if you don't listen to these tracks all that much like if you listen to it on youtube you'll probably not notice the difference at all because you're not uh, you're not the one who made the song and you don't know where the transition transitions are happening so um there may be some parts in here that are aren't really necessary um let's take a look at another part and which is the part that i like the most and that is the very intense part of this song for example i have here um over here is a bit of karagao's minions let me just play it for a little bit And over here, it winds down. And I treated this as a bit of an interlude into the next part. a bit of a drop here in any case it'll go on for this like this for a few more loops and then over here we wind down to the next part and this is a drum beat from Malawan Pushes Heart, which is the heavy combat track. Putting a synth from Teresa's Rescue on it, which sounded pretty good in my opinion. And then over here, exactly over here, starts the next part. And I'll explain in a moment why I've put this little thing over here. So before we continue that, like this is the drum beat, right? Um, when I transitioned into the new melody synth, it didn't have that one last beat that I wanted it to have. So if I mute this, it's I, I feel like it missed a beat. Uh, that may be not your opinion, but to me, it just sounded like it missed just that one extra beat. Right? It feels empty. It feels like a bit barren. I don't know how to describe it, but to me, it just needed an extra, one extra beat. So I just took one, cut it out of here and put it in here and immediately let it fade down. So you don't hear the next one. So just that one beat to introduce the next part of the song, which works just a little bit better in my opinion.
and here's the most intense part of the song which i built up and if you listen closely you might hear it you might not i actually put these layers or the rhythm the rhythm the bass rhythm and the hi-hat rhythm i put off off the beat i think accidentally mind you but the more i listen to it the better it sounded I'm not sure if you heard it, but it was this, these instrument layers that start a tad too early than they should, but I think it actually sounds good. So I kept it in there. And here's where I like, continue that next part. So you have the first loop. And then the next one. Which is a repeat of the first loop with a couple of instrument layers in there. And I continue this beat, these drums, the hi-hats, the rhythm, the bass line. And I just change up the melody a couple of times. where I start transitioning back into um, Karagawas and Minions. So that's a less intense part of the song. And then I transition way back into Teresa's Rescue until I repeat the Spotify version of Teresa's Rescue, which is just a good, damn good mix. And I wind it, or I increase the intensity again to Karagawas Minions, and I end it with Karagawas Minions, the Spotify version to be exact. Because I just like how that ends. I've ended my previous Skyball 27 mixes the same way. Uh, because it just sounded good. In any case, that's about how I construct these mix mixes from begin to finish. So the general idea is make several parts in your mix. Uh, change it up with variety in instrument layers. So you have maybe a constant rhythm, a constant bass drum a constant snare drum and just change the melody or change the drums depending on what you like of course and then create separate parts in your mix um, transitioned or in between you have the like bridges or interludes or whatever you would like to call them and that's how you create a pretty good wholesome mix i'd say Now the same idea applies here as well. This is the Spandopticon Mega Mix that I made. And this is a mix that I made uh, using the previous method. So uh, going into the game, recording samples that you just hear while walking around or while, while fighting enemies or while fully fighting enemies like heavy combat and using all those samples you've recorded to make a mix. Um, it's I use the same basic principle, so I enter with ambience i try to make parts and then transition into a new part let that part play with variety in the instrument layers and then transition into another part and so on until i end it um, i look for samples that work well with one 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 another so uh, one like this one for example sounds like this followed up by this one which is 
almost the exact same instruments. Um, but in here, you'll hear that there's a bass entering in there. Which is a nice increase in intensity. I deliberately look for parts like that so that the f there's like a flow in the song. Of course, when you're using samples recorded from the game, your possibilities are limited naturally, but you can still create uh, a lot of different kind of mixes using just the samples you've recorded from in the game. You'll just have to record a lot of different samples, um, which is what I did previously before I had access to the game files. What is uh, annoying and probably frustrating, at least I was frustrated because of it, is that the game is very random in how it chooses to arrange the instruments. I haven't really found a trigger for that. So there's an obvious trigger is when you're walking in an area and you engage in combat, you get combat music, but the game just randomly chooses what arrangement of instruments you're going to hear. So you might get the combat music, but without the drums, and you'll just hear the melody, the hi-hats, and maybe a bass rhythm. Or you'll hear, um, you'll go from the ambient track into the heavy combat track, like in one go, and you'll get the full intensity of the music, and then suddenly it just winds down back into the light combat track. Often, um, You'll hear a very different arrangement of instruments depending on your playthrough. So you might go into an area, you hear a specific arrangement. And you're like, no, I don't want that. Yeah, you'll have to reload the area. Just go to the main menu and reload again and then enter combat again. And you'll get a whole different arrangement of instruments. Usually going in and out of combat is not enough because the game just hangs on to that specific arrangement of instruments, which is very weird. Um, it's very confusing how the game treats his mute music. It's probably not confusing. I'm just, I just don't have the information on how the game uses the mixes and mixes the music in the way it does. But that is also exactly why I went for looking ways to get into the game files and actually using the audio files to make the music because that makes my life concerning making these mixes a lot easier. Another fun fact about this is that the intensity of the music very much depends on the playthrough you choose. So if you go in normal mode and you get like uh, enemies of level 30 and you're, you're maybe top level, like level 70, um, the combat music will almost never trigger. Or at least light combat music will trigger, but you'll hear very little instrument layer. So the intensity of the music is very low uh, and you'll just, you know, mow down the enemies one by one. If you go into true Vault Hunter mode, and I'm not sure if the Mayhem modes influence this at all, I don't think they do, but if you go into true Vault Hunter mode, you'll almost immediately go into the heavy combat music, and then you'll have to try and take down a specific number of enemies so that the intensity of the combat lowers so that the light combat music triggers. But then you'll have to hope for the right set of uh, arrangement of instruments so you get the samples that you're looking for which is often a very arduous process and very difficult to do so that's the basic idea of how i make these mixes um, making the mixes themselves is probably the easiest part the most difficult part is getting the game files that's a pretty um, complicated process but it's doable. I mean, I have no knowledge of coding, scripting, or whatever of Python, but I managed to do it. Uh, so you'll probably be able to do it as well if you have the time and you want to spend the time on it. Concerning the mixes themselves, the sorting process of the instrument layers is a bit of a tedious process. Like you'll have to go into the TXTP files, um, see what WEM files they use, and then manually sort them into uh, folders that you've created yourself which takes some time, but it'll make it easier for you to pick out the right instruments to make mixes with. This about wraps it up for me. Um, if you have any questions, of course, just pop them down into the comments and I'll ha be happy to answer them uh, anytime and as soon as I can, of course. Having said that, have a nice day and I'll see you around.